welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. Today, we are going to be talking about some trends that we saw pop up in um, an El Decor article, and we were like, we feel like we want to fight. Um, we want to fight back on some of these things that they say are mm-hmm. a big deal, right? Yep. So we're going to break down this article and debunk some of the kitchen and bath trends. Or agree. Or agree. Yeah. yeah. We've yeah. seen some of them too. So I think that this is a good way to just like kind of clear the air. Yeah. Right? And I feel like I feel like all of us that are here today on this podcast, those of you listening and us, we we need a moment to like figure out what's true and what's not true because sometimes people are reporting on things maybe they've asked one source and we just we want to make sure that we're giving you our best information based on what we're seeing since we're on the front lines of design and just tell you what we're agreeing or disagreeing with before you go make really big expensive decisions based on what some what some of the experts out there are saying in articles so yeah yeah, so that's today's podcast it's gonna be a good one it's gonna be really good Yes, but first I want to tell you guys about our home furnishing design service. It's your chance to access Alice Lane's expertise, customized completely for you, and we can do this virtually or in person, but it will give you access to one of our designers, and they have our whole Rolodex of all of our vendors. We have like 200 vendors to really help you get a look, and they can help space plan your house, work through all of the furniture, and um, it's completely complimentary. So it's been really popular. If you guys want to get started, um, you can book your appointment at alicelanehome.com. And that's the Home Furnishing Design Service. I've always told people that interior designers can actually save you money, and this is actually the premium way to do it. Yeah. So you don't buy the wrong size sectional. They help you. Cheers. And the wrong size rug. Honestly. Yeah, and a lot of our rugs, Who you can make any size. Up, like back and forth from a showroom. No one wants to do that. Yeah. Nobody no wants to have to that. return a rug. No, can you imagine? Yeah. I'm not strong enough to do that. Happy. Yeah. You've been working out this year, though. Yes, I have. Thank you for yeah. saying that, yeah. Sue. I was just telling these guys, I did um, an ab workout the other night. I mean, I did treadmill and, and some weights and stuff, but I was like, I'm just going to lay down and look up an ab, ab it, workout. A little core. Yeah. 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 That's guys, right. today's day two after I did that. I can barely hold myself together sitting up right now. It's like when you cough, you're like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I should probably, I should probably keep doing that so that it's not so painful in the future. Yeah. 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 yeah, And then you just get more and more intense and it just hurts anyway. You know, I yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. (laughs) Could you imagine? I'm definitely not going to be a runner, but I should get a lot. I need to get stronger. I saw my arms yesterday. We were doing a photo shoot for um, a big project that will be released by the time this comes out. So we just finished Rachel Parcell's basement. And Suze was like, hey, Jess, can you move that arrangement? It looks like it's coming out of her head during the photo shoot. And so I'm moving things, and the photographer accidentally snaps <laughs> it. And I see these two things, which are my arms, that look like un- <laughs> that look like unbaked rolls <laughs> sitting on the counter. And I'm like, surely that's not what I look like. Uh. No, uh-huh. and your ar- your arms even like suffer from Addison's disease, so they're oh, tanner listen, than most. Listen, I am so. like only wearing long long sleeve <laughs> shirts until <laughs> until Mama can just really get a workout in. That's and totally then I look like Kelly Ripa. When you when you season. start seeing me wearing short sleeves again, that means that the rolls have been baked. <laughs> they they're formed, and I'm gonna be a lot less embarrassed yeah, about awesome. what I look like. That's yeah, so totally. That's exactly why I started working out because I like saw pictures. I'm like, who is who is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that okay. imposter. <laughs> yeah. that that's, hilarious. that's hilarious. I love um, it. Should we get to a review? Let's do, Let's it. do it. Awesome. Yeah. Let's have some good news in 2024. Yeah, right? Yes. We need that. <laughs> uh, so, this is a five star review from at Always Got Chocolate. I like her. Great already. handle. Yeah. I do too. I like her already. Uh, Cheers. She wrote, I have listened to nothing else for what, for what seems like three months and dread getting to the last episode. Oh, living, thank you. Living that's in so England. Nice. That's no awesome way. too. It's inspiring to listen to your huge range of ideas and your openness about design challenges. I've learned so much. And as we are halfway through building our house and your insights have changed many parts of our design inside and out, I admire your achievements. I uh, hope one day you'll ship outside the U.S. and have your own Netflix slash Amazon Aww. show, too. People have spoken. Yes. Netflix, the people have spoken. Call oh, us. Always <laughs> got chocolate. <laughs> We're going to do it. Yeah. We're going to do this for you someday. I do We're going to manifest England. it. I want to do a home in England. I'm going to yeah. manifest that, too. I yep. like it. Going international. I like that. Not yet. So. 
Yeah. Also, I mean, we're, I mean, we, like we're working on shipping things internationally. Yeah. That, that's a goal we have. For sure. So, yeah. 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 Stay tuned. Stay yep. tuned. We're going to get, we're going to get listening. it to you. Yes, mm. for nice sure. You. For sure. Okay. Um, Suze, you had um, some good news for the people. Yeah, I'm really, you guys love an emergency remodel. So I went ahead and had a flood in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. 2024. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, in January, like right on the cusp of finishing our two bathroom emergency remodels of 2023, um, we had a flood in our basement. So we're, we're, things have been ripped out. We're down to the studs. And we're, t- you know, shitter's full. We're getting off the septic tank and tying into the old city. Uh-huh. So stay tuned, guys. Yep. Yeah, stay it's, it's going to be, it's going to get worse before it gets pretty. So, mm-hmm. but. How many rooms yeah. were affected in the flood suit? Like how many rooms will be remodeled? <laughs> well, the whole thing will have to be retouched. The whole basement. Yeah. 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 yeah give a mouse a cookie. Are you going to yeah. just, are you going to just like get that to a decent spot and then not worry about it till you're just tearing Probably. the whole thing down? Yeah. Unless yeah. someone wants to light a match. I don't know. I won't tell. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't recorded. Just this is like just, just between me and my closest friends. No. No, 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 no. Everybody pray for Sue. I know. <laughs> but the bathrooms, they do look pretty. Can I use them they're now? They're so oh, pretty. They're really pretty. We'll do a podcast about that. You guys, what's fun is I did a tally. Yeah. How much it cost. Yes. So that'll be really enlightening for everybody oh, as you yeah. embark on a remodel, whether mm-hmm. you're on a budget or you have all the money to splurge. It was really like... Like, I really broke down the numbers. I'm like, okay, that's what it costs. That's a good idea. Do you yeah. know what we'll do? We'll yeah. sh- we're will we going to shoot Suzanne's bathroom so you guys can have visuals. And then we're also going to give you a tally of what things cost. Because I feel like all of us here are working on some sort of project, whether you're a designer or a homeowner that loves interior design. And I think it's really good for us to actually know what each of these things are going to cost. Because you don't know when you embark on it. No. Had you known, you might not have said... Let's do the second one. Let's do both of them at the same time. <laughs> might as well just... I know, the yeah. guy's going to be here to lay the Especially if you're cash flowing it, because what you probably... Th- what you probably thought it was going to cost and what it did actually cost are worlds away, right? Yeah, because, and you're making decisions like on the fly. We're all busy. We're like, yeah, go ahead and like fix that while you're at it. Or let's go ahead and bring that tile yeah. a couple feet up into the into the sky and let's see how much it costs. <laughs> 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 we'll, see. But, well, also yeah. like when you watch, you know, TV shows, they're like, oh, we like we did this entire ho- home remodel for $60,000. It's like, no, you didn't. That's yeah. There's no yeah, way. Fire. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is really frustrating because I do, I did hear from um, a friend who was inquiring about design services and um, I sent a builder over to give them a bid and they're like, just, you know, these, these things that you guys want to do is going to be around a hundred thousand. And they said, we only want to spend $60,000. And I think that they're misinformed because that's what people are saying you can remodel a house for. Yeah. We all know everybody listening to this podcast, especially in 2024. Yeah. That's not the same as the rerun that you watched from 2018. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just prices are different. um, Specifically for kitchens, for bathrooms, for anything dealing with plumbing or just like those like really technical hard surfaces Mm -hmm. that like you never know what's behind door number two. Yeah. Like, and especially with remodel, you need to like throw an extra 15% on top of everything. Yeah. You know, because you just don't know. Stuff too. And like, yeah. 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 You're going to find something, especially if it's an older home. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So we'll break all that down for you guys. Yeah. No, stay tuned. Yes. Okay. Getting into the Eldecor okay, article. Let's, yep. um, let's break it down. Yeah. Right. You want to tell them Corey. when the article came out, Corey, and let's... This, we- yeah, this came out December 4th, 2023. Okay. So in anticipation of 2024, this is nine interior design trends to watch in 2024. One thing I kind of want to preface this with as we've like looked at it and even the homes that we've captured in 2023, Mm -hmm. we have seen some of these things and we have like, we have loved them and their trends and and things that we've incorporated into homes, but they're homes that we've designed several years ago, but they're the ones that are finally getting captured, Mm -hmm. photos taken of them and they're being public, you know, published. And so like, if you've seen these before, you haven't seen them. It's, it's a trend because it's like finally starting to be like shown to the general public mm. in yes. mass. Yes. Yeah. You know, so I think that that's just like one thing I want to say out loud mm-hmm. is that like n- none of these things like for us are groundbreaking. Yeah. You know, but like, are we seeing them more and more? And are people like being more, you know, accepting t- new ideas versus the modern farmhouse, which everyone's sat in for so long? Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we're seeing. I think everybody knows that color's king right now. And then, like, this will be really interesting to kind of, like, go through. So, Corey, hit it. Awesome. Yeah. First one, 
high glass walls are yeah, high gloss walls are out. Texture is in. Mm, we, I disagree. I disagree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's define what this is. Yeah. High, high gloss walls versus texture. Yeah, I, I texture. think we should share an image. We just barely shot a project in Washington, D.C. We're actually waiting to get it published. So we are not going to share this on our social media where it can be consumed, but we will share it here. And there's a beautiful library we did um, in a high gloss red in Washington, D.C., and it is the chicest thing it's so beautiful. that I feel like I've seen in one of our projects for a minute. Like, yeah. it's just so good looking. I understand the texture thing. Plaster has been an extraordinary tool, a beautiful surface. You have to love that look. Um, I was just talking with Matthew, our wallpaper hanger. He's also a painter. He just finished plaster for a project, like, just barely this year. in Jan- I think he did it in January of 2024, homeowner does not like it they think the walls look dirty and they they're just one of those people that want it to just be a perfectly clean smooth surface so this is also a preference whether it's a trend or a preference um, you have to decide if it's for you but I still think high gloss has a really great place and you've seen even some of those incredible like Affacino Gulo kitchens some of those French kitchens where they do the entire thing in enameled metal And that gives you this high gloss candy shell kitchen that's so extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I would love that forever. That would never trend to me. It would always be incredible. Like we've done this for a really long time. And even like when I was in school, like gloss gloss was historic. Mm -hmm. Like you saw it like when I was in Scotland, I saw it. Like whole red lacquered rooms there too. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think it's something that I consider a trend. You don't consider a trend. Mm -hmm. And I think it will forever and always be a statement. Whether that's your style, whether plaster's your style. You know, I think that that's just like the big yeah. debate is like, what is your personal style? But I do not think it's out of style. I feel like I've seen matte trend, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen high high gloss, I think, is reserved for those really, really special places. Yeah. It's incredibly difficult to do. It's very expensive yeah. to do. And when it is done, like we all just lose our minds and applaud over it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think people like honestly, I would I would have said the opposite. To be on, like, what is trending and what is not trending? I like say, high gloss. Yeah. I would say the high gloss is like winning over over high texture or plaster. Yeah, just because we've been in such a dry spell for so long. Lit- legitimate kind of like dry spell. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. gray raw wood, you know, just like mm-hmm. everything is matte, like you were saying, and people want the wetness. They want, you know, mm-hmm. they want the diamonds. They want the high gloss. If anything, I would think the pen, you know, yeah, it would swing that way. Totally, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I do agree that texture is in. Yeah, I said like, high gloss walls are out. Texture is in. Yes to yes to the second part. Half agree. Yeah. Yeah. Half agree. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, the next one and is texture is not orange pill, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not the same. Let's. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not what we're talking about. No. <laughs> um, the next one is brown. Yes, brown. <laughs> uh, will be your next statement color. Uh, we, we're definitely seeing this on the runway. Um, we just they just barely showed um, mm-hmm. runway for fall mm-hmm. in 2024 in New, yeah New York Fashion Week and yeah brown is definitely a massive movement. Um, you're seeing it textured as crocodile. Um, you're seeing it matte. You're seeing it leather, glossy, all of the things. It's it's really it's probably the new black. Um, so yeah, I think I think the it has its place. To it though, mm. it yeah, a definite richness, it's sophisticated. Not dull, it's not. Muddy. I also feel like it pairs really well with a lot of things. Everything. I also like that it's warm because yeah. we've been we've had so many colors that are cool toned, like the grays and stuff like that. That I love that we're using warm whites now and warm neutrals, and that you know brown I think is a nice, really beautiful way to get depth without having to use black. Yeah, and warm wood tones. We've touched on this when we talked about market trends too. Yeah. We're seeing the wood tones even warm up too. So mm-hmm. it's not like your gray washed oak floor anymore. It's something that's more medium. It's more mm-hmm. rich. It's more exotic. Yeah, if I were building right now, I would really think twice mm-hmm. for a lot of you about what wood floors you're going to do because white oak has trended for over a decade now. My house is nine years old. I have white oak floors in it, and we were doing it in projects before that. So it has had its run. And now we're going to start to see, I would use walnut. I feel like that's always going to be universally beautiful. Um, You could still use an oak and do more of a medium stain, but I would really think hard about those wood floors in because you're making that decision for life for a lot of people. Maybe not even like the tight, I don't know. Like I'm I'm just, yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of over like the rift. Like, Uh I don't know. Like we want to feel more figuring and that's what we're seeing at market. 
yeah. with like more interesting green patterns. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Next one. So agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, agree. Agree. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the next one is per prepare for a terracotta tile takeover. It was a lot of teas. So I was making sure I was getting that, that right. Was a tongue twister. Yeah. Terracotta takeover. <laughs> I'm into it. I, Me too. I think, I think there's something historic about it and I think people are craving history you know, be it like we're going to talk about that and finish work they mentioned, but I think there's something just, there's a warmth to terracotta. I, I think it that. naturally follows like this zellage, totally. you know, that we've been seeing for the last several years. And the zellage is that Moroccan tile that has like the pooling and all the variants of color that we're seeing on backslashes. I did them in my emergency room model. Mm-hmm. In I two bathrooms. You, yeah. in two bathrooms. I remember you loved it for your, po- you were going to use the black zellage. In, your, in my kitchen. In your kitchen when you built nine yeah, years ago. totally. So we've seen that. So I think the terracotta, I think that's a natural, a natural like migration. Yep. And when you walk on terracotta, like we went through, we did this house tour in California when we were walking around with the builder. And in all these old homes in Northern California had like original terracotta floors. Oh. And they were stunning, you know, and it's a Nancy Myers movie. It's home again. Yeah. And there's something so warm about terracotta versus mm-hmm. just like a natural stone. We're always going to love natural stone. Like, I think that will be an evergreen for us always. But there is something like this, like, pillowing effect mm-hmm. that I feel like terracotta floors have. Yep. And there's just, like, there's such a history to it. Like, mm-hmm. it has a story to tell. And kind so, of a softness, yeah. too. And it also feels artisan, which I know we're going to get to. But the zealot tile is artisan with the pooling of the glazes. Yeah. So if we're not using real stone, using something made by artists' hands is another real quality point mm-hmm. um, to make in your home. And I think I, I also am a, like a yes I'm on this trend. It. I love it. Okay. Do you remember, was the company, was it Tabarka? Yes, Tabarka Studio. Tabarka. They're uh-huh. out of Arizona. And I remember we did that home in St. George. It was supposed to kind of resemble this like Santa Fe Ranch yeah. is what their like keywords were. And we used so much Tabarka in that, but it was like this p- hand painted terracotta. And it was, mm-hmm. it's so beautiful. You guys should look it up online. And that's like more, they do do floors, they do wall tiles, they do everything. But like if you want like something that's more hand painted or if you're going natural terracotta, I think it both, I think it's both going to go for a strong run here. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Love it. One, Agreed. Before we move on, one quick question yeah. to you guys. How do you think this differs from like the like Chuskin like era of like terracotta tile? Probably what you're pairing it with. Yeah. And I don't know. When you think of Tuscany, do you guys think of? I think the... of like pitted travertine. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I also think of all the dark um, alder woods that they paired it with. Mm. So I'll bet you the pairings will stay fresh. Um, I still think white case and base is is going to be king mm. um, for twenty twenty four. Like stay classic and keep it. Yeah, keep it clean. I think it won't be so about. heavy and yeah. muddy. The pairings with it, mm. I think, keeping it fresh, still keeping with those warmer paint colors, but not going as dark as you know. Um, yeah, the dark brown stained woods, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah. Agreed. I also think, uh, I think this is going to be a territory thing. Like Suzanne totally. mentioned Arizona, California, yeah. um, Santa Fe. Like I think some of those Western states mm-hmm. and maybe even Florida and some of the yeah. coastal states, I feel like that's going to be, terracotta is going to be really great in those regions. And then people that mm-hmm. just love that style and have maybe history or roots with that will bring it yeah. into their homes within sort of the, the middle of the United States, mm-hmm. the Midwestern and you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like that. I, I'm not sure that it's going to make sense for every single territory unless they have um, some sort of uh-huh. life experience with it and it means something to them and they love it. Yeah. This is interesting going back to like the high texture on like the terracotta floor doesn't make sense with a high gloss wall, you know? Right. But it would go make sense with a textured Texture wall, wall, you yeah. know, Plast- like more of the white plaster. plasters. Like, those two pair biscuit. well. So I'm like, mm-hmm. even like this article, I wonder if that, that's what they're kind of like gearing it towards is that kind of more yeah. California, Arizona. Anyway, interesting. Yeah. There's places for all, like all of it if it's done in good taste and if it's done well, mm-hmm. you know, but I think the terracotta just to make sure it doesn't go Tuscan, mm-hmm. I think it's how like, if it's like you keep it graphic, you keep it original, and, you know, I think... And right now, I mean, just this case in point, like any, there are trends, but like anything goes if you do it well. Amen. And if it's your style, yep. you know, and I think that that's the key, the key thing to know is just like, nobody wants to fall into a trend. You need to figure out your style and figure out if this like makes sense for your style. Mm-hmm. So that's a good thing to keep in mind as you're going through these yeah. for yourself. Great point. Cool. Boo Clay is here to stay. Just, I'm going to disagree. Yeah. I think Boucle's just been around for, gosh, 
for so long, at least five, six years. It's, it's trended for five, six years. It's mm-hmm. been around forever. Like we we learned about it, you know, when I was when I was in school. There's also, ago, but there's like it's just been such a. There's also influx like flex of it, you know, um, kind of a a spectrum of bouquets. Yeah, mm. and there's the really beautifully made bouquets will always be a yeah. thing. That's exactly. that's kind of what they're talking the about because it it does say with fresh updates. So yeah. Like, Different colorways, you know, not just white or off white, yeah. and then like more texture and like less. De- like I think the density, the density is yeah. important in yes. the bouquet. Yes, yeah. I was just wearing. Um, so we're recording this on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I know that's not Happy an. Yeah. I know that's not an evergreen thing to say on the podcast because this will come out in a few months. But I was just wearing um, this this jacket I got at a vintage store um, this morning and passing out Valentines, and it is boucle. It's off white. It's probably from the fifties or sixties and has big rabbit fur cuffs and stuff on it. And um, I was like touching the fabric this morning. I was thinking about boucle because we're talking about it, and I was like, if this could be on a couch. I would die for it, mm-hmm. like die for it. And the hand wasn't so dry that it wanted to like snag a nail. You know how like yeah. the I feel like there's really affordable affordable bouquets now because it has been trending, and so now all the cheaper manufacturers are making this trending weave, right? Mm-hmm. And if you were making it like like the hand of this one I have from the fifties, we would all die for it. We would want to make it right now in everything. It's just, it's just a level of quality thing. And it's also a taste thing, whether you love it or not, but it has been out so long that we've seen it It done. It looks like your sofa's already peeled. We've just seen it done really poorly. And so I think we're just starting to tire of it because a lot of the really affordable manufacturers are got, gotten their hands on it. And there's just a lot of sins that are being done in boucle right now. And so it makes me think, oh, let's, sorry. let's just go the other direction because it's been imitated to a point that we're tired of it. Yep. In your mind, what's the other direction, Jess Bennett? I, I don't know. Like That's a good are, question. Like, even like when we're selecting things for the floor, like if we're not choosing boucles, like I was just walking in and I'm like, we have like a lot of really beautiful velvets. Beautiful velvet. You know, I think it's still linens. a texture game, but it's yeah. just like cleaning up maybe a little Mo bit. Mohairs. Yeah. Yeah. You can still get that high texture, high yeah. pile thing. But, I, th- you know, we're not at that point yet where, what was the fabric that was so in style during the Tuscan era? We're not to Chanel yet. There we know at some point we will be on this podcast talking about mm. Chanel. No. Yeah. There have been some, like, samples at... For real, uh-huh. so it's coming. I, it's I've not, seen some rad ones. Yeah, like, there's some good I ones. I saw some when we were at Fabric it's, Market. I'm like, I think we all like, we can feel it in our hands. The Chanel of 2004, yeah, five, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, they're better. Yeah, anyway, I so, love a great woman. But it, it's just too. like it's just like one of those like tick words. You're just like Chanel. Oh. Yeah, like it's it's too hard to like go back there. So totally, and you always see it like um, a tone on tone damask mm-hmm. version of the Chanel, and just Gorgeous. the really heavy fancy, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think yeah. those high pile ones, though, with a really great hand, um, people always love a velvet, a mohair. Yeah, yeah some sort of blend. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Curves meet straight lines. Yes. Mm-hmm. Love. Yeah. Totally, totally agree. agree. The radius yep. is still in. Uh-huh. We all just, like, want to soften it a little bit. And I think there's something just, like, really sculptural about it. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, curves. I mean, we're doing it in millwork. We're doing it in cabinetry. We're doing it. And furniture, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. On, um, also, I would say edge profiles for countertops. Oh, yeah. Do you want to speak to that? Yes. Okay, so for so long, we had just, like, the straight edge or the eased edge on your countertop edge, you know, like, in your kitchens, in your bathrooms. And, like, with this whole, like, radius movement, um, seeing that we did it, I think, I feel like I first, we first did it recently in Tiger Oak. We had that elongated OG edge mm-hmm. in their kitchen. And it was so pretty and it started to just kind of like stretch out Mm -hmm. what was the straight edge. And now we're starting to see like the big bull nose, you know, I'm in my emergency remodel, my master, I did a double bull nose. Mm -hmm. I was just feeling it. And Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I'm leaning into this hard and I love it. And Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I do. And I think it just, it feels like such an artist move. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm, yeah, I'm an absolute agree on the curve meet straight. I was looking at furniture, um, vintage furniture pieces, just kind of going on a deep dive. And it's inspirational to us as we create product to see like what's been, what's been done, you know, in the sixties, what's been done. Still, yeah. What, know. what profiles are so beautiful. And I was seeing that bullnose shape, um, as sort of the deck under the cushion, mm. you know, and on a day bed. And then it goes into another, like a plinth base that has like a bullnose detail to it. And so everything sort of having these radiuses just feels so 
so chic like it should this should be in a music video or mm. it's just like you know this is just like the most beautiful thing yeah. in the whole world that who can access this stuff and i'm she like the mu music from yeah the ghost when they're making clay yeah. i think it's you'll so i think you'll start to see us doing bull nose silhouettes on on things that we're doing we do it on a kit bed right now that's um also kind of a vintage inspired thing but i think well we're doing a new bench that hasn't yeah. arrived yet yeah. that has that um quality to it so yeah i think those curved meet straight lines is oh so good it's but it also was a, it also was a thing for 2023 and we probably saw it you know late 2022 so i think it's going to be around for a while we've been seeing the curved sofas for gosh five years at least yeah, yeah. so just plan on it sticking around for a while yeah, and introduce it like a, at your own like leisure. You don't have to go like all in. I think that's what makes it timeless interiors is just yeah. like have a mix mm -hmm. of things you love. Some might have curves, some might not, but it's the straight mix curves. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Artisanal everything is in. I feel like we're agreed. Yeah. Uh -huh. agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I think in food as well. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like we're seeing we're everybody's using that word. It's like such a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this though. That's mm -hmm. artisanal is different than like doing it yourself. If, if that makes sense. DIY is not artisanal unless you're an artist Ex or, and, you know, yes. and, you know, well what? said. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's just my point to that. Yeah. I mean, so if you're just starting on your DIY, you're not an artist at it yet, but mm -hmm. like could be 10,000 hours. You can call it artisanal. <laughs> yeah. Then that's when it, <laughs> that's <laughs> great. That's yep. awesome. Um, High tech lighting will be our decorating bestie. I really think that that's said very cutely. Mm -hmm. So whoever the copywriter is, <laughs> I just want to say, I see you and I'm winking at you. <laughs> I think that's very cute. I feel like the high tech lighting is, um, I do, at first we were like, no, thank you to the under counter lighting and the in cabinet lighting and all the glowiness. And it reminds me of like the jellyfish lights that are so in fashion right now. And y'all, yeah. y'all see it in your neighborhood. They're pink and red right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know? I know. So, uh, yeah. but I do, I do have to say, like, we did it in a closet in Dallas in kind of a, um, his, he loves um, Scandinavia and Scandinavian influences and Japanese influences. And his closet is so pretty with no lights on and just his clothes are kind of glowing and it's so chic. I th and I, then I we think have a girlfriend, it, right? a girlfriend just did it in her gym and with, you know, paired with white oak and woods and just like, it just gives a glow without an overhead light being on, which we all know, you know, everybody's saying, don't use the big light. This is a way to just get some, just a highlight. The, the Even theater, past. the theater in Rachel Parcells basement we just shot. Yeah, it's beautiful. All up in there. It's a mood. I don't think it's for every room, but, I do think it's a nice little highlighter, just highlighting a detail in the space. And yeah. I like it. I love it. Yeah, yeah I'm into it's really, it. It's really pretty. I think yeah. it's just like how you do it. Yeah. Make sure you have the right people doing it for you. Definitely. Mm. And I know that um, uh, Visual Comfort, who's probably our biggest lighting vendor, they are definitely working hard on, li on high-tech lighting. Mm. And it is a huge category for them. I also feel like it's one of those things that's um, – it's green, it's responsible, it's lower energy, it's, um, uh, they even have rechargeable light bulbs that are going to recharge like a cell phone that you can just screw in your lamp so you don't need to have cords anymore. So it this, this crazy. movement yeah, right? is, is so much bigger than, than we even can understand right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be massive. Yeah, and, it, and I think too, like, it'll be a, something to really watch as we, or like looking at cans everyone's still using cans like it's yep. still a thing we need overhead lighting um but it's exciting to think about like what could be you know yeah. and like going to smaller cans and like just mm -hmm. like less of them and like what is the most efficient way to give us overhead lighting and so we can still have decorative yeah. you know so yeah. i'm excited i'm really excited about high-tech lighting and i think they're getting better at the temperature yeah they've heard us and yep. they know that we want warmth yep we miss the incandescence you know like we love that glow and so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what it, where they go. Totally. Me too. And I feel like um, everybody's going to be excited not to have to screw in a light bulb. Like, or, or you have know? to plug in a lamp. Yeah. Good hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, alternative materials will be the standard. Como? Alternative. Yeah. So basically, the, the article is talking about, like, sustainability and how that's been, you know, a yeah. huge, um, or it's been top of mind for a lot of us. Yeah. Uh, and so using just more like, you know, 
sustainably source things or man-made yeah. things to kind of replace uh, um, organic materials that are, you know, maybe um, at... More rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I kind of... I respect the movement. I think if it's done well and I can't, you know, and if it feels... I think there's something that we we just love about living materials, mm -hmm. you know, and like that's something that we really, we try and make sure. I think it's an honesty thing. And like when we're doing interiors, you know, be it like the hard finishes in your home or the fabrics, like if they're honest materials and they're real and we, and we feel like nature from them, that feels good. The energy of that is good. But yeah, I think there's also really good energy and sustainable I, materials. I wonder it, just, too it just depends on what it looks like. If this would be say. better said that alternative materials are going to be, coming and look for them but I wouldn't say they're going to become the standard in 2024 I yeah. feel like this movement's going to take a long time for people to understand the value of it what is it like do you know what I mean like or, when the when the Tesla came out not everybody adopted it right away right it mm -hmm. takes a while for the industry to say yes this is great for instance we just um Adam just sent over an article I think Sunday night about quartz countertops. Yes. Yeah. I sent that to me. Oh, Suzanne sent that over. Sorry, not Adam. No. Adam and I were commenting on Adam it. Adam probably saw it too. In she bed. Been, like talking about it. No, but I think this is a man-made product. Mm -hmm. It's um, a certain percentage of it is real stone. A certain percentage of it is composite. Yep. Yeah. And tell them what is happening with quartz countertops. Uh, people that are grinding and honing them and doing all of that uh, to get them in your home, it's like very um detrimental to their health yeah they're getting so, some sort of silica poisoning and yeah. they're and they're dying yeah. there's like reported cases of deaths for the people that are doing the labor to to manufacture the countertops mm -hmm. with the slabs and um so i feel like these alternative materials need to be proved and tested these materials have been out for a long time quartz has probably at least 15 years Cambria, since we've been like, doing it it's longer than that yeah mm. a long time and so now they've got to come up with ways of manufacturing it that maybe don't involve humans in some sort of airtight case because it's the dust particles from from these resins or whatnot going airborne that are giving them this silica poisoning yeah and it's just not safe so i i don't think this is a trend for 2024 yes it's happening yes it's been happening for decades it's going to continue to happen. Things are going to rise and become bestsellers from it. But we've been in the industry on the front lines of doing this. And I can't think of what all these alternatives, it almost seemed like they were going to use something instead of sheetrock and, and is what the article was showing this yeah. new wall material. But again, like what is the cost of that for a human manufacturing, cutting it to bring it into the house? And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. or even just getting the material up to par you know whenever something synthetic is created in any medium yeah. i feel like it's just not quite as good as what it's yeah. replacing yeah and it takes a long time to get it there just yeah. so like to the your research. point yeah, yeah like it's it's Lots. just it's not going to be done in a year that's going to be something that's you know a ways down the road yeah um but i mean people can start you know adopting it and using those things and that's where we get information on it and then learn to make mm -hmm. tweaks to it so and i, I mean, guess yeah. doing our own research yeah. too if you are interested in a certain material your builder's talking about it just like make sure you know what it is yeah you know yeah yep. cool the last one for this article was mm -hmm. so the ninth one is victorian era details will have a revival okay. so like ornate molding mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah i i agree with this in the sense that, like, I think we we all love the romance of, like, old versus new. Mm -hmm. Old meets new. Yeah. And so, like, even, like, the historic projects that we are working on, like, the magic of it is in the moldings. And so I think what they're probably saying is that even in new construction, people are trying to get that, that, look. that romance, mm -hmm. you know, to, like, you know, live in every day. It's the moldings. It's the stacked crowns. It's the larger baseboards. It's, it's the intricacy it's the of boards. laying it's the hardwood floors in pattern, not just straight lay. Mm -hmm. They really took time to put in the details and the work and crafted these things really beautifully. I also have seen a huge uptick in vintage shopping. Yeah. So people wanting to have those older things again. Mm -hmm. So I definitely feel that movement. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 would, I wouldn't necessarily qualify it in my mind as quote unquote Victorian. Cause I have this old dollhouse in my mind of mm. like Victorian Ginger style. Yeah, yeah. But I think the, um, the, the idea and the nuance of it all and how it's being put together in a beautiful way. Um, and the real attention to detail is yes, yes, for sure. Yep. Um, yeah, but I don't think it necessarily has to be in a Victorian style. No. 
and yeah. it's back to the artisanal you know of just mm-hmm. like artists making things yeah you know representing itself in a house yeah, yeah. great it's kind of a reaction to like yeah. what's been happening for the last like eight to ten years in my in, mm-hmm. in my opinion you know it's like yeah. not as clean and sleek and you know um i don't know straightforward yeah i think yeah so. we just barely went to a home that like I think we'll be doing a big remodel for, and they had just like the, just even on the casings, they just had like kind of shaker casing, just the like the flat, two straight flat, flat stock, stock mm-hmm. on the sides with like a and bridge this is the like, top. This is like a 15,000 square foot dream home. Dream home. Yeah. And um, like shaker cabinets and stuff like that that just shouldn't have happened in the level of a build that this house was because the exterior is so quality. The windows are quality. Everything about the house is quality, but then the details which I'm going to go ahead and blame on the interior designer. We're not quality. We're not, we're not a quality. We're not a quality um, stream of thought. Yeah. So interesting. And we're like, this house deserves a profile for the molding, (laughs) not just flat stock. But again, like this remodel was done 10 years ago when flat stock was trending and, and that was the case, you know? So, yeah. So I look forward to um, Victorian era details, just more quality, more thoughtful qualities um, going into homes because finally the flat stock and the shaker style and the matte black aren't trending. You know, we're going to be able to get a better quality. Totally. Yeah. So smart. The next article is um, zeroed in on kitchen trends for 2024. So it came out in September of last year. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, El Decor. The uh, article title is These 2024 Kitchen Trends Are Already Coming In Hot. Okay. The first one is layered understated lighting. Okay. I think it's probably like kind of sings back in my mind back to kind of some of the tech lighting that mm-hmm. we just talked about. Yep. About like under cabinet. Yeah, it's just like it's a glow and like yeah. there's a mood and they're on their own switches so you can get whatever kind of look you want. They're showing mono points over the kitchen uh-huh. island in yeah. this in this picture. And I, I do think that that is a look. I, totally. I feel like the market's still going to want a pendant for the yeah. most part, especially if you're highly decorative. But mm-hmm. in a contemporary home or more yeah. or sort of organic, modern California home, I think this look is very chic. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think combined with like a statement lighting in the right spot. So maybe fewer pendants yes. and some more of these organized like grids. I do love that. I, I think, wasn't it Kylie Jenner's that had that between her beams? She was the, like one of the first oh, ones I saw with yeah. this like, really organized rhythm of these mono points mm-hmm. and it looked awesome. Yeah. It looked amazing. I know that that was a living space, but we're doing them in kitchens, you know, where we do need more focus lighting and we don't want the ceiling littered with cans. Mm. So I do. Yeah. I'm Into it. it. I'm yeah. Feeling it. Great. What's the next Agreed. one? Warm, rich colors. Yep. Yeah. Agree. Totally agree. Yeah. All day long. And again, a lot of the stuff that we captured last year, you know, unless they like really requested like a wider, or clean, like really sleek kitchen, like Barbie dream house that was clean and sleek. Everything else that we captured had more tone. Yeah. Like or colored, a colored, colored kitchen. We know that that's what publishers want. Mm-hmm. We know that that's what we're feeling, you know, because we felt white for so long. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It feels like a breath of fresh air to it's me. It's a breath it's of like, fresh air. Uh, and it's a yeah. personality nice. too, you know, mm-hmm. like they, you know, they took a risk and it paid off. And yeah. one thing I love about it is that mm-hmm. it's like, it's like, uh, warm, rich colors. So it's like mo- not just like white. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so you could kind of, you could take advantage of that trend, but also be different than mm-hmm. your neighbor. Totally. You, you know? So. Yeah. Yep. Um, I love it. Super excited for that. The next high, dra- high drama, marble and stone. Mm. Yes. So like always? Please. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. No, it, it's one, like, seriously, like, go, if you haven't gone on a date to a slab yard recently, you should go, like, <laughs> happy oh. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Anyway, go and, like, see what, like, what you react to, and it's, it's interesting, we even had a client that we did an install, like, a year and a half ago for their kitchen, and we proposed something that was more contrasting, more, like, like, interesting veins, and more contrast that we knew felt like old money, and she's just like, no, I want to be more still, I want, I want to be, so, we want, you know, we went with a Caldea marble, and it was, it was beautiful, and it was quiet, and when it was installed, she's like, I wish I went with the other one. Mm. I wish I went with the boulder stri- like the boulder vein. And mm-hmm. I'm like, isn't that like an expensive decision to realize after the fact? Mm-hmm. So just like, I don't know if it makes you nervous, like that's okay. That means, yes, that means like it's, it's a good nervous. It's a first date nervous. It's mm-hmm. butterflies. It's, it's a risk that's worth taking. Mm-hmm. And I think we've seen it time and time again, proven successful. So yeah. 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 yeah the big movement is going to be here for a while. Yeah, you're safe to make that decision. Big move and also colored marbles, I would add on to that. I would like, also 
agree. Yeah. 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 Butler's pantries and storage galore. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. This article's getting them all right. I know. Um, where so, do you, yeah. like, I mean, I we've seen this, like, yeah. before. Is there any difference, do you think? Or it's just like, no, yeah, it's kind of just like, what? For sure. I, I, well, the storage thing is just like one thing people are always like, oh, if only I had more storage, I wouldn't have to move. Yeah. Right? Because they, yeah. they had that they had that surprise number four baby. And they've just, there's just so much stuff that comes with each kid. They're lacrosse sticks. There's stroller, the backpacks, the, you know, there's A just. A lot of gear. There's just all these things so that. Gear. Yeah, especially like, I mean, if you're in the city, I think storage is probably a premium. You probably don't even have a coat closet, you know, but you you really do. In order to keep your main living spaces clean and clear, you need to have storage closets. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, they're talking about butler's pantries and storage floors. So maybe they're talking about um, also your pantry mm-hmm. in general, places to store food or extra serving dishes. Or, I mean, think about what's in your butler's pantry right now. Where would you put that if you only had kitchen cabinets? Yeah. Where are you going to put that turkey roaster? It's going to fill up an entire cupboard that you're like, I need to put flour and sugar in that cupboard. And you know what I mean? So true. So you yeah. just, I don't know. I it, it, I feel like in the older homes, they didn't have as much storage. And now you're like, yes, let's definitely give ourselves place behind the walls to store things. Because otherwise, we're going to have to have all that stuff under our bed. Right? Yeah. Or, or where else we put it? Or just like cramps and like clutters up our regular kitchen, which nobody wants that look. Yeah. Right? We want to feel beautiful, but it doesn't mean that we don't want those pieces. Yeah. You know, even, I think even just like entertaining, like with the butler's pantry, you know, just like yeah. the idea of the party pantry, the butler's pantry, the, you know, even the school, the scullery, like we just, I think with COVID, like we just want to be with our people. We want yeah. to entertain. We want the platters. We want the breadboards. We want all those things so we can like actually like host people and have places to put them and mm-hmm. have it beautifully styled. So, um, yeah, I, f- I feel like with all of our clients, like we're doing butler's pantries, we're doing party pantries because they have collections that they're actually using, which is exciting. It's not just mm-hmm. collecting dust. It's stuff that they use. Or they desire to entertain. Yeah. And so they're like, I need a place for the vases because I'm going to bring in fresh flowers and I need yeah, um, I get my mom's china and I like want I have that stacks I of different it, colors of candles or placemats yeah. or whatever it is. But I just think you can't have too much storage, you know? So. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. Outdoor kitchens and connection to nature. Yes. Totally agree. Yeah. I feel like there's just more and more like outdoor appliances that are just being offered to yeah. your everyday, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, middle class person. And uh, yeah, it's, it's that's a thing. Yeah. Like, and, and you know what? Like we pay for our yard too. Like it's let's go out and get in it. Yeah. And square footage out there too. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think that the cook or whoever's putting on the party should have to be, you know, in the kitchen the whole time while the party's going on outside. So this puts this puts the party thrower out with the party, mm-hmm. and more people can yeah. be a part of it, but be a part of what's going on and part of the energy of it all. So I love the idea of it. It is expensive because you're buying two kitchens <laughs> instead of one. Yeah. You know, those outdoor appliances aren't aren't cheap, and the space to put them in isn't, but... Boy, are they amazing. I think it's so fun doing a great outdoor space. And then also you're like, I'm going to throw all the parties, you know, because you've you've got the pool and the outdoor kitchen. And, you know, I think um, a lot of times, too, um, it switches hands as to who's cooking. Because sometimes at our house anyway, I don't know at you guys' houses, but my husband will do the barbecuing. I don't even know how to work the grill. So it's really nice because then I can work on things that I like doing, which isn't touching bloody meat. And he can do that. And I can do, you know, I can do the drinks and the whatever else. And I don't know. I really like, I like it. Yeah. What's more, like, there's nothing more romantic than like a pizza oven. Like, you know, just, I think they're so cute. And I think it's so fun to make homemade pizzas with your kids, with your, yeah. I did a lot. We did it last night. We just got a pizza oven and yeah, it's, we've just been using it way too much. It's It's crazy. So fun. So fun. It's like kind of, it's. To me, I'm like, it's making dinner, what we have to do anyway, but then it's like an activity at the same time. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, yeah. I don't know. Memory making. Definitely. Yep. Artisanal. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne's the artisanal police. I'm working on those $10,000 actually. So. <laughs> Mine come out a little crispy, but it's okay. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, okay. Induction cooktops. I'm a no I, on this. <laughs> so like you don't like it or you don't think it's a thing? Um. Well, I will say... I mean, we do have a client, one client so far that has asked for it. And I it gives you that glass top look. But 
I don't know. It depends on the client. And and if the house is really contemporary, I think it works not to be looking at those big metal grates. Mm -hmm. But the the stove has been a trending thing for so long, which is like, let's get the French range. And it's got this real heft to it. It's like a center point of the kitchen. It is. And so I feel like you're taking all the detail off the oven and you're just replacing it with this very contemporary looking thing, which is going to be great in contemporary kitchens. Mm -hmm. It's efficient it boils faster all does all of these things i just think it's a client preference thing and visually i still like the look of the heavy oven i Mm -hmm. i I agree whenever i see a a kitchen with an induction cooktop i'm just like it feels like it's missing something it feels like a motorhome home kitchen it's like anemic yeah 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 so sorry sorry induction cooktop yeah i'm sure you're awesome (laughs) you'll get there one day yeah i'm sure you have a really good personality (laughs) (laughs) oh that's funny uh communal eating kitchens yes 100 percent. yeah 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 Yeah. everybody wants to be in the kitchen anyway if you have a love seat in your kitchen everybody's on the love seat everybody's in the kitchen everybody wants to be around the cook and it's just so fun it's Mm. like i don't know banquette you it's know, like totally, I have a banquet in the we kitchen. Every, in every woman's heart, or man's heart, is a banquet. Yeah, like you just, want it you get a lounge where... comfortably. You're not sitting in a dining chair. You can fit more butts in that thing. So we have had like 10 people around our 60-inch table because we have a banquet, mm. which is like, you know, like this built-in sofa idea. It's more like a sectional because it turns two corners, or it turn, is on yeah. one wall, turns a corner, and on another wall, and we have this little 60-inch table, and then we can bring as many chairs around the one side, and you can put so many people, and that's yeah. a party, but it's also within the kitchen, and so the energy just stays in that room instead of having people go to a different room in the dining room. But then they're like, I can hear them laughing in the kitchen and I want to be a part of the fun. Yeah, yeah there's some FOMO happening. in the yeah, yeah, totally. So you're like, let's just get it all together in one room and not make it. In fact, we were just at a yeah. consultation and they were like, we've never used the dining room in 10 years. And they're doing an update. So they need new dining room furniture because this old stuff Doesn't isn't fashionable. But it's the first thing you see when you walk in the house, the dining room on one side, the office on the other. And we were like, what would you use instead? Because there's no point in having a dining room if you are if you haven't used it in a decade, you know? Mm-hmm. So we're going to turn it into a grand piano room and do a beautiful lounge. And then you don't have piano. to feel bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. So I totally agree. The communal yeah. eating kitchen is where it's at. Yeah. I love that article. Mm-hmm. We yeah. agreed Me with too. everything. Yes. Good yeah. job, Elder Yeah. <laughs> you, <know. Cheers. laughs> you guys know. should have a magazine. I know. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's awesome. Okay. That was it. Great. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much there for you know. listening, you guys. Um, if you want to join us by following at Alice Lane Home or at Alice Lane Interiors on Instagram, we would love to have you there commenting and joining in the fun of seeing the work that we're working on. And you can also check out at alicelanehome.com and sign up for our insider newsletter to be the first to know all things Alice Lane. We have so many new introductions coming. We want you guys to be the first to see. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, to see what we're creating. Um, and we'd love you to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. You. For any questions or topic ideas, email us at dearalice at alicelanehome.com and we will catch you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 